How are you? I'm Jesse McCready. I'm with Animodule. Check out my modules at Animodule.com. So I'm going to build an STD since last week's solder side chat was such a rousing success. We'll do it again. Probably wonder why I keep uh, it's nail polish. It's uh, yeah, touch up my manicure. My uh, my lovely nails here but then when I'm done with that I get bored of all my leisure time I mark the microcontroller that I've burned a bootloader to that lets me know it's got a bootloader on it it's ready to go uh, you remember last time I found it the hard way. <laughs> what are you? Who has a workbench like this? What a messy kind of troll. There you go. It's much better. Clean and organized now. All right. So the STD has two boards here. First thing we put the female headers into the rider board. I don't know if that's the uh, technical term for a board that rides on the back of the front panel board, but that's how it works in my head. It's the rider board. This one, I put these on when I reflow the surface mount stuff on my electric griddle. So they're already there. Showed you last time how I clipped them. Put this on and sort of center themselves up proper proper armrest to avoid the the carpal the carpal tunnels Just give them a little tack a little, little tack there you go Yeah, that nail color doesn't really match my complexion. I'm more of a uh, more of a uh, winter, spring, summer, <laughs> fall. <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> there you go. Now I got these tacked and. Run on through here. We got a. Oh, pardon me for reaching. This guy goes on next. What we got? Oh, oh! I already put them on the uh, table. Hey, what do you know? Trying to look professional for these videos. The right way. Yeah. Oh, and this one's upside down. I'm all like that. Put this on here. Oh, she got me all flustered. Give this a little attack. Key tip don't hold it where you're going to attack it because it gets warm. Uh, power header. So I'm just reaching all over. There you go. Obviously, I'm not going to solder the power header in upside down, but it helps to stabilize everything. It's just about the right height. And 
tack these in. Go on back. Really try to tack them on the side that is not the ground plane. Because it takes longer to heat up and get a good a good joint. Jeez, I don't think I had enough coffee. I'm shaking like a bastard. Solder up this socket. It's an Animodule STD. It's two channels of tap tempo clock. You can adjust the multiplications or divisions of it after it's running. Oh! Either with a pot or control voltages. You can set the tempo with the switch on the module or the gate input. It takes us two two taps and then it's up and running. Or you can leave the gate going and just adjust some multiplications and divisions as need be. Second channel sinks to the first channel. If you press the switch it doesn't have to sink. It's not mandatory, but there's a switch that allows you to sync it. And that's where the neat stuff happens, is the two channels interacting, because on the bottom, there's a logic outputs, the OR and exclusive OR. which takes the two channels and does the logic equations with them. Now, or is, either one is on, output is high, and is, both of them need to be on, any output is high, and exclusive or is if either one is on, the output is high, unless they're both on, then the output is low. And obviously for all of them, if those criteria aren't met, the output is low. What we got here? Oh, power header. What do you know? It's right there. Hi, oh, isn't that convenient? Hey, yeah. One of these days, I'll show you. I have a little chat with you while I'm populating the surface mount components. And you can see what I get up to there. Or, if you're looking for something more exciting, you can go outside and watch the grass grow. <laughs> I guess with the wonders of this modern technology, you can bring your phone out and watch the grass grow while you're watching this video. That's not supposed to happen. Let's see here, that's good, that's good, that's good. Good, good, good. I want to toss that to the side there. What's, what's, why is that so gratifying? Spike stuff to the ground. Switch, switch, switch. The sink switch. Here's the momentary switches.
give us an uh, eyeball and make sure look good, look good, look good. Oh, oh. We're missing a component. No, we're not. That's uh, good. It's optional. All right. Go ahead and tack this on. Now you notice my uh, ESD certified wooden work surface complies with com, com, pit, complies with all the FCC safety regulations. Can you see what I'm doing? Am I blocking your view? Huh? I'm not used to have someone watching over my shoulder. You gotta be more considerate about that. Well, you're watching over the wrong shoulder. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll try it try it going around the other way next time. But first you don't succeed. The thing about these switches, you don't want to beat them up too much. Because the guts will melt. And then replacing it is a hassle. Certainly manageable, but why? Screw around with that. Well, I could be doing customer service. Let me That cool down. Almost. There you go. Look at that. Didn't even have to break out the uh, what do you call this? The braid. The braid. All right, we got that. It's good now. I'm a dope. Cause when. I laid out this PCB. Well, I didn't. I didn't throw a test. And it turned out that on the breadboard, everything worked fine. But on the real board. You want a pull down resistor on this switch here. Or else. You get random triggers. So I clued you in. When I order a new set of PCBs, I'll fix it. But such a such a low volume doesn't make sense to scrap 100 PCBs. It is a little more work, but not 
Damn the world. A little uh, trick, I'll just drop that through there. Put this together like so. Give it a little attack. There you go. Cut this off here and revisit it when we get there. We got a few potentiometers here. How many? What? There's two. Two of these guys and two of these guys. I know, there's something nice about a nice big light knob that I really like. But to get the trimmers for the inputs, for the CV inputs, which I find are kind of crucial, you can't just use the offset. And who has a bank of attenuators? Even if you do have a bank of attenuators, there's a million modules that do not have an attenuator. There's never, never enough attenuators. So I put attenuators on the control voltage inputs. I end up using these little trimmers. Like I said, I, I prefer a nice bake light knob, but. Then you'd be at least another 2 HP on here. And the trimmers do the trick. And it's not every time you use it, you're not controlling it via control voltage. Ha, huh, I put that in the wrong one. That's why it went in so easy. Rule number one, put the components in the proper places. Other guy. There we are. All right, we'll get the jacks in there. Put the LEDs in. Give a little program. Whoo, all this hard work. Really heating right up. Alright. I don't even know if I'm on camera. Got an idea for a video with an STD and a TikTok. Yeah, a mixer, all sort of tripping through the different multiplications and divisions. Run the second channel off the triplets. The uh, times three multiplication on the TikTok. Maybe I get around to it this weekend. All right, uh, we got there, put the LEDs, two orange LEDs, 
you know, I was using the blue LEDs. Found nice blue LEDs. They're frosted. And they're not blinding if you set the current resistor properly. But they they can cause problems with this module in particular. For some reason I don't understand. So I switched over to installing the pink LEDs because they sound the best anyway. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I actually, I have, you think this is clock module, but you can use this at audio rates. It is, you're looking for some, some grit and grime. I got a video about that. I'm playing my guitar through it. Probably on this YouTube channel. Alright, now you want to set the tempo, you want to watch what is being output, look for the pink LED. There's a one, there's a yellow. Nope. Yeah, that'll work. Yellow, green, and a red. Proper current set resistors. Sure. All right, where's the template? Got to have a template for this guy. The mixer template. I think it's the only 6 HP module that I make, so it'd be easy to find. Got a template. See, so put the uh, sandwich the tape in between where the LEDs go. Set the depth for them. Wrong way. Wrong way. Get in there. Got it. I wish the assembly video was exciting as marketing for the STD. So <laughs> I guess it's slightly more intriguing than watching paint drive. I suppose that's subject to opinion now. Uh, you know, you only have so much paint. Eventually, it's all going to dry, and then you'll be looking for what's next. Get on there. Gotta go ahead and finish my kludge here and solder these pull down resistors to ground. Like I said, it's a hassle, but we couldn't add more than a minute to the build time. And we build your modules with care and attention here at Animodule. And lots of cussing for the children. Good, good. Go ahead and touch that up. That's going to spring. Get, get, there we go. All right. We do set all these jacks to height. Make sure the LEDs are in place properly. You ever solder your LEDs and then find out one was cocked? But you already cut them off, so it's too short. Now, of course, you don't do that because you check them before you cut the legs. And you check them before you solder them. Like a professional. I, I Of course, it doesn't happen to me either. 
I set the bar. So. <laughs> Tack these LEDs in here. Don't melt the plastic. I want to solder the jacks first. They help set the height and lock everything in. And if a, a jack is out of alignment, you can really tell when you go put the jack in. It looks sloppy. You got, the, you got your uh, plug hanging out, sticking out at an angle, bumping into your other jacks. And it happens. Still works fine. Oh, it might happen now. Someone else. <laughs> all right, these jacks are all soldered up. Go back and solder them again. worth doing right, it's worth doing twice. Pretty sure that's what the old guys say. Some old guy says that. Probably didn't get a lot done now. Solder up the pots. Electromechanical lugs. And all the anamodule pots. Oh, Mr. Jack. There you go. Mr. Switch. So you want to round robin on the legs on the switches so you don't melt the little plastic guts. So these switches, they work great, they feel nice. Can't beat the price. Well, if you beat them up with that heat, though. What was I saying about double checking the LEDs? I'm confident in my work. How they all... Oh yeah. <laughs> you can't tell. There you go. Here's the tap tempo. I wonder when it stopped recording. <laughs> Guess we'll find out.
what I was saying, here's the orange, the input indicator LED, the pink is the output indicator LED, same for both channels, tap tempo switch for each channel, sync switch, here's the CV input attenuators and the offset that controls the multiplications and the divisions of the running clock. The OR, the AND, and the exclusive OR outputs. I want to say, you got a, I uh, wonder if I got a front panel around here. I do. It's a label. Drink it in when you get to see the belly. There you go. Find the switch caps. <coughs> there you go, you got to test fit the switch caps. Before you put it all together, make sure they don't rub on the sides. Get stuck. So the multiplication division pots, CV input, attenuator, tap tempo, sync, channel 1 gate input, come here, channel 2 gate input, or output I right, just need a couple of these and output second control voltage input Control voltage input for channel one. Channel one output. Channel two output. And the creme de la creme, the exclusive OR output. Now these logic outputs just take the output of channel 1 and channel 2 and perform your logic operations on them. Is that what you call it? Logic operation. I don't know, someone more educated than myself would might know. Get them a little tighten up. Said I made this knurled nut driver with a triangular file and a six millimeter, a six M socket. It fits perfect and works 
amazingly better than any of the store bought ones I, I got. This is good, good steel socket, good Craftsman USA. Store bought ones, they didn't fit properly to begin with. And then, these would always bend over, break off. I was always refiling it, touching it up. It's junk. Junk. Alright, where was that? That's for a different module. This guy here. Still gonna flash the IC, but we do that in socket. This header hole here. What do you think? My nails dry yet? Ah, looks good, didn't smash. Looks good, get all the legs to fit properly. That's nice. And there we are. There you go, I'll even put the knobs on for you. I'm sure I got all, oh yeah, I do. This is a two, two tool operation. It's precision work. I tighten them with this one. I bent this trying to open up the Makita battery. So I didn't have the right security screw. And here's here's a custom made screwdriver that gives me a little more more purchase on these set screws. It works fantastic for tightening them, but for some reason it doesn't fit as well. It's for loosening them. Took a screwdriver and filed it to the right shape and size. It's my set screw driver. Like I said, that's why I don't have hash marks. Alright, memory card full. Not sure where that dropped off, but give me a chance to wash my hands and some of them if you got them. Did we move? Did I jump? Did I jar you? Good. Alright, so that works good. Still gotta do the quality test. Well, we're ready to go. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That's good for you. Mm. <coughs> that hits you where it feels just right. So, I'm Jesse McCready. I'm with Animodule. Check out my modules at animodule.com. Thanks for hanging out.